All right. Well, I want to say hello and good Friday to those that have joined us today. Welcome to today's Open Line Friday. We will be talking with Josephine Hecht, the business owner for the data portal. So hi, thank you and welcome. Uh, we also have with us today our infamous Kruno, who will be helping out uh, moderate the questions. Uh, as you heard, as we were all joining to make sure we have audio and video set up, this meeting will be recorded for everyone. Uh, at any time, our uh, attendees can chat in their questions. And then throughout today's session, I will be unmuting everyone to so have a chance to ask questions live and uh, discuss the data portal uh, topic with Josephine directly. Um, with that, again, thank you for your time, Josephine. I'll let you introduce yourself and today's topic on the data portal. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me here in this Open Line Friday, and thanks for giving me the chance to, to uh, yeah, tell you about the product I uh, I stand for in the ePlan environment. Yeah, as Sarah already mentioned, my name is Josephine Heck, and um, I'm living in Düsseldorf in Germany, and it's just near to the headquarters of ePlan in the Cologne Düsseldorf area. So hello from Germany here. And um, yeah, glad to be here today. And um, I'm with ePlan for almost three year now, three years now. And um, yeah, I joined in 2019. And um, now I am the business owner for the ePlan data portal and the new ePlan data portal request process. So I'm the business related person. Um, yeah, you can ask for all of for these two products, and I take care of two development teams who. Uh, yeah, always develop these two products and we try to improve always. So great to be here today. So I cannot hear you, Sarah. Oh yeah, no, I said that's fantastic. I said thank you so very much for joining us today. We really do appreciate your time, uh, especially on your lovely Friday evening. <laughs> um, and Karuna, we thank you for yours as well. So it looks like you wanted to talk to us today about the data portal. As you mentioned, you're the you know global business owner. Uh, and for those of us here, um, what is it, right? What is the data portal? Why should we care? You so know, what, what, why is it too important to us? Yep. Just one thing before we start the disclaimer, which Josh was saying at the very first, uh, that yes. this meeting is recorded uh, and- uh, yes. Everybody who's attending can watch it afterwards also Correct. As, a, as a short yeah. disclaimer, but with that, let's dive into yeah. the questions. Dive into it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. What is the data portal? Very good question, Sarah. What is it? Yeah. Um, I would like to share some slides uh, because I think it's even easier uh, if I show something and not only telling you what it is about and that's that's or I share my screen. Um, yes, yeah, so here I have a schematic overview of what the data portal is. Those of you who already are in the ePlan environment active and already using ePlan, they might know it. Um, yeah, we have the ePlan data portal available, which is an online platform where we deliver parts data. So in your engineering, you typically use many, many products from different suppliers, from different component manufacturers, and um, yeah, different kind of data for these components. And um, usually you have to create the data sets on your own, but in the ePlan environment, that's uh, not the case. Um, we provide these parts data from the manufacturer themselves to, to you via our data portal. So we are in close contact with all of the manufacturers we, we have in the data portal here. And um, yeah, we deliver the data to you and you can use these data to create your schematics, to create the digital twin, to use it in your pro panel, in your electric P8, in your fluid and so on. So you can really use it right away. And if you're already on an ePlan subscription or on an old software service contract with ePlan, you can, the, the data portal usage is included and you can use it right away. So that's, yeah, general about the data portal. For those of us who have joined us, does anybody have questions? for Josephine so far on, on what the data portal is.
I don't see any of those come in the chat. Well, fantastic. Continue on. Like you said, you also mentioned, um, can you tell us more about the data in this data portal, right? Yeah, I can tell you more about the data in the data portal. So, um, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, maybe some facts and figures about the data in the data portal in this slide here. Um, we already have more than 1,250,000 different parts in the data portal. So, a really a, a big amount of data you have there. You have um, high, yeah, you have, you have yourself to do the choice which part you need and you want to use. And the data is there in the data portal for really many, many parts. And uh, most of these parts are already there with a function template, which means that, um, yeah, the graphical rep representants is, is there and you can use it right away in your A plan. Um, we have more than 300,000 data sets already ready with 3D data. That means if you want to use the ePlan Pro panel for your cabinet building, you can use also these data uh, directly there. Um, then what I would like to mention is um, about the data quality. We have the ePlan data standard since uh, almost three years now available, and um, this standard describes uh, what uh, yeah what data has to be there if a uh, part will get the ePlan data standard logo and we have already um, yeah almost the half of all data inside of the data portal compliant to this standard so there we checking the data um, for you the manufacturer delivers and then you can be sure that all data you need is available and as I mentioned before the many many manufacturers we are in contact with and which provide the data to us. Um, we have uh, 388 manufacturers now in the data portal, which is really a big amount. And um, yeah, the data portal is available in 19 languages. I don't know if uh, this is valid for you, but um, yeah, in, in 19 languages, you can use the data portal. So every language you, um, you want to use it, you can, you can change it di directly. Um, and then we also have uh, quite a high number of selectors, which is 15. So 15 manufacturers already provided their, uh, their selector, their selection aid, um, where you can select your parts due to technical needs. So they have like technical filters for their own parts. And if you are used to use the selection aid on the manufacturer's website, you can now use also from 15 of the biggest manufacturers them in, inside of our data portal. And what is maybe um, yeah interesting for you, as I'm um, talking now to to mostly U.S. customers, I think um, that we already have 22 libraries which are compliant to the NFPA standard inside of our data portal. So this number grew within the last uh, year a lot. I think for a year ago we only had five or something. Um, and I know that um, yeah, especially in the U.S., the NFPA standard is uh, often used and um, of 22 manufacturers, we already have logic macros compliant to the NFPA standard. For all of these other manufacturers, you still can use the function template. And if you use the um, ePlan platform in the right settings um, that you have there, the settings for the NFPA library, you can use also these parts then with a graphical representative for, for your engineering. Fantastic. Wow, Josephine, this is quite a lot here. I'd like to ask you and Kruno as well, when we see manufacturers, you're talking component manufacturers, and it sounds like there is a wide variety of components available in the deep data portal, right? From terminal blocks to circuit breakers. Do you have any other examples of the manufacturers and parts we might find in here? Yeah, so um, yeah, I have here now just an extract of all of the manufacturer. I could not uh, put all of them on, on one picture. Yeah, um, one but slide. <laughs> that will be too overloaded. Um, but you see that, uh, yeah, really most of the big manufacturers, the well-known manufacturers, the most used manufacturer are already providing their data in the data portal. And yeah, the number is growing and growing. So we always um, yeah, find manufacturers which are maybe not so big and not so often used, but um, yeah, also the smaller ones provide well, uh, yeah, very good products and um, yeah, which are also often used and also these we support with providing the data in the data portal. 
I, I do think uh, one thing which is very impressive is really the number of manufacturers here. As you see, uh, Josefina has challenges with updating the slides because on her previous slide, there were 388 manufacturers, but currently we are already over 400, which is, which is amazing. Um, maybe a little bit also about the history of the data portal, how it started. Obviously, we know why we are doing, why would, would there is now the data portal and what benefit it, it gives for our customers, right? But if I'm not mistaken, the data portal started around 2008, 2009 with nine manufacturers, which decided to upload data as the end or with the goal that our ePlan customer base can utilize this information faster, right? And um, I think Josephine would like to talk about EDS and why a standard of information is so important, right? But if we take a look back like 13 years, we started with less than 10 manufacturers. I remember uh, one significant event in my ePlan uh, a lifetime was a trade show 2014 in Switzerland, uh, where um, Dimitri uh, Tsoulakis, Dimitri who was back then responsible for the data portal, uh, he had a quick chat with me and he, he explained me or he forecasted the future growth of the ePlan data portal, right? For me, it was unknown how far it can go or how it will grow. But back then there was, I think, seven between 70 and 80 manufacturers in the data portal. So in late 2014, and he, since his previous job was very similar, he worked for Cadenas, which is a um, supplier or a cloud solution for mechanical components where you can go and download probably the, the biggest one worldwide. And he mentioned to me, it's a Kuno, once the magical line of 100 component manufacturers is uh, reached, this will become a snowball and everybody would like to be the, be the inside, right? And right for me, I remember this day, like every time when I'm thinking about the data portal or everything, every time anybody's mentioning the data portal, because he was so much on point and as you can see, uh, in, I think in the early 2015, we reached then this level of 100 manufacturers, and from there, it um, became it grow um, significant, right? So, um, yeah, as I said, that's a little insight from 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 my side regarding the data portal, and um, I'm so happy that more and more and more manufacturers are using this to supplying um, the data in the data portal for our customers. Fantastic. Yeah, you're right. And I think so... Josephine, yep, yep, you're going to talk more about like now how do you manage that standardize the data then from all these manufacturers, right? And how do you make sure the data is consistent across many? Yeah, so that was also a real challenge. So uh, we really um, had uh, a time ago uh, the, the, uh, the, the goal to just to just onboard as many manufacturers as uh, as we can and um, yeah but in the last couple of years also the quality of the data became more and more important because we see that also the workflows of our users um, are more automated um, yeah nowadays and so there the data is really the fuel for for these processes for these automated engineering processes and um, therefore 2019 was the eplan data standard introduced and with this ePlan data standard, we um, yeah we want to take care of the quality of the data and really make sure that our users get the data they need for all of their processes. And maybe to give you just a, a rough overview, what it is about, the data standard um, yeah contains several blocks and um, describes uh, which data needs to be filled and which data and also how these data fields needs to be need to be filled. So, for example, for some product categories, which are the most complex product categories, um, also a drilling pattern and a connection point pattern for your um, automated processes are are mandatory, let's say it like that. And to give you maybe one short example, if you compare this data sets for, uh, for these uh, terminals for, from three different manufacturers, you can see here um, that they filled the data set in 
completely different way ways everything is not wrong so mm -hmm. everything is right but you never expect what you will get when you download one of these data sets um, out of the data portal you see some here um, yeah they they filled in units and some didn't and so on so you are yeah it's a surprise what you will get but with the data standard this is all uh, described and um, um, you can expect or you know before what you will expect when you use this data set so you see everything looks uh, looks same and um, yeah that's uh, that's good to know before if you want to use the data I think, uh, as, as you are saying, it, a proper database and uh, certain data quality is key for proper usage of, uh, of ePlan. Uh, we know maybe a decade, decade ago when data portal was in the, grow, in the growing stage, right? We had uh, manufacturers who supplied their the ePlan information with CDs, right? So that the, there was a, pro, the to, a total product catalog um, av available in, in some medium, like in, like in a CD. That means whenever a user uh, needed ePlan data, even if it was like one component, right? They tended to now import everything, right? So, the, so they had a, a huge amount of components, even if they didn't, didn't use it, right? And essentially this picture tells the story in the past, excellent, right? Because then depending on the manufacturer, they had the, the ways in how they are entered the data, right? That means it was, it, the end result was for, for the customers, variety of information, right? And it was necessary to do then a cleanup action, right? So if remember probably uh, eight to 10 years ago, it was very common for us to visit our customers and help them clean up the, their parts databases and create their, uh, their standards, right? So, and this with the EDS, with the Even Data Portal standard, this will, or this is solved now, right? Because the manufacturers are delivering in the same certain quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, additionally, know, I think it you. and additionally, you will save a lot of time because you do not need to edit mm -hmm. the data afterwards. So um, that is also a big, a big advantage when you use data standard compliant parts data for you as a user. Yeah, that's what we're going to comment, Josephine, just like you were saying in Kruno, the confidence now in the data, right? And you're spending less time troubleshooting and, and, and less time having to redesign or redraw. Um, which is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so what makes the data portal so different? You know, we're just now talking about all the manufacturers and the data available. Uh, you know, how do they get access now to all this great data? Yeah, so that's very easy. If you are a, an ePlan user, that's really easy. And I can show you um, just in the ePlan Live system how it will look like and how to use the data. So uh, yeah, maybe it's time for a very very short live mm -hmm. demo. And um, yeah, now as you see, I'm as you see, I'm using um, the Eplan Electric P8. I'm in my Eplan Electric P8. I'm using the version 2022, which is the latest official released version. So the next version will come in a, in a couple of months, but um, there there won't be a difference. So you do not have to. Uh, think about that anything will be different than now and you find the data portal right here in your top navigation bar under the ePulse that is our ePlan cloud environment and here you have just the tile for the ePlan data portal. Um, then um, you do not have to uh, insert your credentials you um, uh, yeah edit your credentials um, just by just opening the ePlan environment so then you are directly also logged in into your ePlan cloud and now um, yeah I'm in my data portal here. This is our, our parts list here you can see all the parts which we have there. You see here the number I just mentioned before it's more than 1 million and um, here we provide some filters and some and if, uh, yeah and some search uh, and catalogs and so on and you can also filter here for different standards so the IEC and the NFPA inch standard here 
And yeah, that's also how you how to use it. And I can show you also how easy it is to import one part. Let's try it out with one part. Um, yeah, if I show show more, that will take too long and <laughs> extend here the meeting. Yeah. And let's imagine I have from my customer just um, yeah a list of parts I should use because they know best what what they want in their in their machines and so on. So I have a list, I know the part number and I can just type in the part number here. Let's say, yeah, um, uh, what is it? I think this was the part number I uh, thought will be good. So um, now I just typed in, uh, yeah, not a complete part number, but uh, a kind of a part number of a specific, specific series. And I have this part here. Let's say I just take this one. I see um, now in the detail view that this might fit to my needs. And um, yes, so this is looking good, like what I need. And then I can here um, add it to my download list, have different feedbacks, uh, different functions like the feedback and the manufacturer page. I can only insert the macro, insert the part or import it to my parts management. So this is then imported in my local parts management. And um, this I want to start now that takes then a time. So the part is now downloaded. And um, yeah, you see here that I get many, many new files. And um, yeah, the download is completed and I will import it into my local parts management. And you see here the message that the import was successful. And afterwards, I can just place it in my um, in my schematic. Um, there I go via the insert center and I can here use the uh, device center and also type in again uh, the part of the part number I just uh, know and um, then I should find it. That also takes here under devices. I have this one I just um, downloaded, I just imported, and here I can place the graphical representative. So, and now it's placed in my it's my it's placed in my schematic. And imagine you ha would have to uh, create this whole thing on your own. What time it would have cost you? Um, and instead, I just um, it took, I don't know, to two or three minutes now for me to find this part in the data portal and to download it, it and um, yeah, to place it here in my schematic. So it's really, um, really, really time saving if you use the data out of the data portal. Yeah, so that sounds fantastic. I like the search functionality you had, but you know, partial catalog number, you could filter by the standards you were looking at. Yeah. And then you're adding to your own, if you said your library to pull into your um, schematics. So that's fantastic. Um, maybe, maybe with that one, then, oh, go ahead, Bruno. Yep. Sorry. One, one thing, one, one functionality in the data portal, which I think maybe a little bit underutilized, but is really cool is as um, Josephine was downloading the component, she had the possibility to check uh, the, the a checkbox which which is called accessories and additional components, right? That means uh, right. ePlan is smart enough to, or essentially, if, if if it's defined to download the main component and all components which are related to that component, right? This will make future um, future searches and future future download and com download of components not necessary since you can download it in, in, in one step. All together, right? So I do think that's a very uh, interesting and useful functionality. And additionally to it, in this in this search window on, on the left side, where you have the filters, uh, there is the ePlan data standard, which we just talked about a couple of minutes ago, right? That means right. if customer want to search for the EDS component compliant components, they can just activate this checkbox. Additionally. And software or data portal will only show the components which are compliant. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, yes. and uh, what you mentioned regarding the accessories—that's really also a useful function. I 
didn't want to show it here because some some of our parts they have really lots of accessories and that um yeah would then extend the downloading time so i did not want to t wait so long if the until the part was completely downloaded um but yeah for example for cabinets it's a really useful function because then you have the basement and the right door and the right um yeah uh yeah cabinet and um, all fits perfectly together if you, yeah, for example, download a cabinet with all accessories. Mm -hmm. Well, and the best part, it looks like you'd always have access to the latest number of drawings, right? Or, and, and as more parts are being added, um, as you're showing here, you have over a million parts, that number is going to keep growing, right? Um, That's right. So you'll always yeah. have access to the latest, yep, yeah, access to the latest data. Yeah, exactly. Um, but with so that, Mm -hmm. uh, we we provide new parts data, um, yeah. In 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 yeah. In general, all two weeks we have new parts data, and we keep on going that we will uh, get more and more EDS compliant parts data and so on. So yes. Mm -hmm. So what happens if they can't find the part they're looking for? Right, you're always going to have maybe a very specific part they're looking for, or you mentioned maybe a manufacturer that we haven't um, worked with yet. So what happens in those situations when they can't, they can't find the part they need? Yeah, that's right. So um, um, therefore we have a, we have a new system, um, which, which we can offer or a new service we can offer. Um, I can also explain it uh, better with a slide behind. So as you mentioned, um, it can always happen that you need a specific part and we don't have in the data portal. I mean, uh, if you had take a look internationally, worldwide, there are so many manufacturers of parts and um, so many yeah, data and so many parts itself. So um, it could always happen that uh, the specific part you need, we do not provide with, within our data portal. And um, that's where the data portal request process, which is a new service we offer since uh, three months roundabout, um, yeah, comes in. And um, I, I can show it better to you with this uh, with this picture shown on the on the slide. So this is the data portal and the process how it is for standard. Yeah, the standard process for parts we we get from the manufacturer. And um, now you can request missing parts data um, via our data portal request process. Um, this um, whole thing will be handled via, via e -plan, so called e plan credits. Um, you can buy these credits and then you will see them in your cloud organization and then you can use them for requesting parts data you need. And then a team of e plan data creators, so that are um, internal e plan employees, which are very experienced in parts data creation. So they do since for years, they do only parts data creation. So they really know what they do. They will create the parts data for you and then deliver it back to you as a service. And um, yeah, then you will get your data set uh, within the short time. So at the moment um, we are able to deliver this parts data within one week roundabout and um, then you can use the parts data in your engineering and um, you can focus on, um, yeah, really on your more important task and or focus on your engineering and do not need to spend so much time on this task of, uh, of creating missing parts data. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if you said, you, uh, um, you still have the ability to create it yourself, but this allows a consistency in the data, right? When when you're using this new request process, and then it allows that data to be also, um, is it does it go back in the data portal for others to use them when it's created with this new process? No, so they, it won't be in the data portal. Um, it won't be on. It It'll will be only be provided to you. Yeah, I mean you paid for it, and okay. um, that's only fair if. Uh, if yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's I, good to know that then that part is yours. Yep. Yes, exactly. I do think it's a really uh, valuable uh, functionality which we are here offering since um, even if the data portal with the numbers which we, which we saw before is a very strong asset, uh, when we talk about 
keep lending our presentations to new customers, right? But they are always asking about the, the questions, what if a component is not in the data portal? So how can I get started? Uh, they are asking about any type of possible assistance either by key plan or um, by somebody else, right? And I do think that's a very convenient way to um, help the customer and say, okay, you don't have to be worried. You just need to know the components which are missing, and you can you can request them directly uh, through ePlan. And as Josephine was mentioning, you don't have to be worried about the quality of the components which will be created because it's done um, from ePlan experts or by ePlan experts. So. Yeah, that's right. And all of the data you will get via this request process will also meet the regulations also of the ePlan data standard for sure. So, um, yeah, you ca can be sure that, um, um, yeah, that all data you need will be available and you yeah, can also know before if you know the ePlan data standard and use already other parts which are compliant to the ePlan data standard, you can be sure that you will get the data um, you need and you will know before how the data will look like and in that the, the fields are filled in the standardized way. Fantastic. Is there a limitation then to the data I can request or the parts I can request to be created? Um, a limitation? Not really. I mean, um, yeah, if, if you have enough credits, you can request as many parts as you want, but you have to request every part as one. So you cannot upload a list or something of parts you need um, because of the calculation behind um, that uh, every product has a different price. And um, that's mm -hmm. why you have to cre create for each part you would like to request an, an oh, oh yeah, an own request, let's say it like that. Fantastic. I do think, I, Can you I, show I, us how that, oh, sorry, go ahead, Bruno. No, uh, it's very interesting. I would also like to see uh, if we can see how the yep. process look like. But I do think that that's somehow important to understand. And thank you for just explaining it, that customer can purchase credits through through the, through the cloud organization. And then it depends on the complexity. It's essentially all about that the complexity of the components, how much credits a part will cost uh, to, to be requested. And for that, uh, from that perspective, it also makes sense that it's a one by one uh, request of, of, of the components. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, that's right. So maybe before I show you how it really will uh, looks like, if you request the part, maybe something regarding the pricing of the parts uh, request, um, yeah, you or the yeah the parts you can request. Um, so first, we we start only with the product group of, of electrical engineering. So um, yeah, you cannot uh, request uh, cabinets or something like this. Only electrical engineering is the only product group you can request at the moment because yeah, it's not so long on the market yet and. We are in the starting phase of uh, yeah, giving you this possibility and providing this service to you. And um, yeah, we have three types of products based on the pricing. We have very simple parts on the one hand where the price will be two credits. Um, for example, it's cables. Yeah, you can imagine that a cable never needs a 3D macro. So um, yeah, there is not so much data which needs to be created takes not so much time, but still valuable. And for two credits, it's, um, it's yeah, two credits is the price for cables and also with field devices with very few connections. So with below 10 connections, there also the price is two credits. Then we have standard or medium complex parts there. The price is five credits. For example, it's, it's field, field devices with more than 10 connections and also PLC parts and drives with few connections and most of the other devices that are mounted in or on an enclosure are in this medium complex category. And we have very complex parts. The price will be 12 credits, for example, PLCs and drives with uh, yeah, more than 10 connections. So there you really um, need some time to create it and with a 3D macro and so on. Um, so that needs some time and that's uh, the price for this kind of parts. And yeah, regarding the credits, you can order a package of credits, uh, which is, um, yeah, one credits is in one package. And um, yeah, depending on the 
yeah, category you want to request, um, you can um, calculate how many for how many requests that that will be enough. Um, yeah, depending on uh, your what what parts of uh, what parts you want to request. And um, yeah, to be honest, I only know the price in euro for the one of the, for the package of 100 credits. But I think the US price for one package of credits should be around about $400. So um, I'm not completely. Uh, I completely know it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by by one dollar, but this should be round about the price. Yeah. <laughs> Plus or minus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best time to have this presentation uh, in this week because I think just recently the euro and dollar are are, are one to one, right? So yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Is, is, is this, yeah, this is where we have to state pricing is always subject to change, and then we smile. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but we have an approximate pricing. But like you said, they can purchase a package of a hundred credits. Then they're able to use those credits depending on the type of part they like to have created. Um, do those credits expire, or are they able to keep them for a year, right, to use throughout a year? Yeah, so the credits, you're, you're right, the credits will expire after one year. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think one year is, is um, lots of time to, to have this, uh, yeah, to use it. Um, I think... Um, yeah, when you imagine you have a, an average of all product categories, so two credits, five credits, or 12 credits, it's around about 15 or 17 requests you can do with one package of credits. And uh, yeah, I think it, it happens, yeah, typically more often than 17 time, times a year that you need a, a missing parts data. Um, so, it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's valid for one year and afterwards they will expire. But of course you will get reminders when the credits are about to expire that you have enough time to spend them and to request missing parts data. Just to, doing That's a very fantastic. quick calcula calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you said it's $400 for around 15 to 17 parts, which probably on, on average $25 per part, it's that if you put it on man hours, it's probably not not too expensive. So it seems to be very fair, fairly priced because likely mm -hmm. likely it will take somebody who's a new new employee to create at least thirty minutes to to create these components. Like likely more, right? So I think with that uh, we have here a pretty fair pricing for for, for those for those credits, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Sarah, we got a question in in the in the chat, which I think is super super interesting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. You want to ask it, or or uh, is Josephine Go able to, to read the question? I cannot see the chat at the moment because I'm in the presentation oh, I can. mode. Yeah. So it would be okay. good if you no, can read I it. I can. Yeah. No, we have a great question coming in from Matt. Thank you very much, Matt. Okay, what happens if they purchase credits, they again use their credits to have an item created? Say a year later, that, that particular manufacturer joins the data portal and creates the same item, right? So what happens to the item that they purchased to have created versus the item now available in the data portal from the same manufacturer? Yeah, I yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know this. So I got this question also yesterday in the webcast here in Germany. I did in German language. So uh, interesting that it's the same question. Um, so unfortunately, we will not refund it because you will get the parts data set within five working days. And um, yeah, then it's a kind of... Uh, yeah, of course, I can understand that it will not feel good if you see the same part you paid for um, later in the data portal, but um, you can be very sure that uh, that the part won't be there a week after you, you requested it and paid for it. So if it's one year later, you still had the value out of it that you had the parts data set available for you within uh, one week. And so, um, yeah we will not refund it, so. Maybe from a technical perspective, uh, I, I don't know if, if, if Matt's question, okay, yeah. yeah. 
Matt was asking it, like not worried about the cost, more okay. worried about how the parties managing the database will be overwritten. And this is what I wanted to uh, add here from a technical perspective. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the part is initially in your parts database, right? And Matt, whenever you are downloading parts from the data portal to your to your parts database, you can set up filters, right, which defines uh, or essentially you can protect fields right from, from being okay. overwritten right that means if you have if you have the part in a certain quality which which you like right and then you say okay i'm taking a look in the data portal and there is a manufacturer which has the same data uh you can take a look and you can define which fields you don't want to override so that means essentially you can add information but not necessary not necessary over override it that's right Excellent questions, Matt. Thank you very much. And I think, <laughs> perfect. And I think too, Josephine, you're going to show us how would they request this, right? Yeah, I can show you and um, I will use uh, the data portal and the request process within the browser. For sure, you can also use it within your ePlan environment, but um, I use not the productive instance uh, because I do not want to uh, spam our data creation team that they always get notified when new requests come in for these testing purposes. So I use it in a in another instance and that's why I'm using it in the browser version. But yeah, as I mentioned, you can also, of course, use it in, in your A-Plan environment. Um, and yeah, I'm now here on the starting page of the cloud and I go to the data portal again um and that takes a little bit time of loading in this instance and then here on the left navigation bar i have the tile part inquiry um and there i have to go and yeah on this view i have now three possibilities the one is uh, order missing parts data from eplan this is the one via the credits i will show uh, yeah now or yeah I will show soon, but I will first um, also tell you about the request to manufacturer. So, of course, you can also um, send a request to a manufacturer. This request is free um, and the request will be sent to the manufacturer of the depending part you request. Um, but the manufacturer can then decide what he wants to do with it and what not. So some manufacturers are very motivated to answer these requests and others they are not so um there you yeah it's it's very um it's very uh in very few times you will get the data within a, a time that is acceptable and um and the time before your project is already closed so um if you need the data set really soon i would really recommend to um use the request to e plan and you have the possibility to see a table of all requests I will show uh, in a couple of minutes. But now I want to go to the order from ePlan and show you how this will look like and this works. Um, yeah, so this is our request form and here you just have to describe the part you want to request in the best way you need, um, you, in the best way you can. And for sure, the first thing you have to add is the name of the manufacturer. Here in the drop down list, um, you have all the manufacturers that are already in the EDP. So if a specific product series is not in the EDP by a known manufacturer, you can also request these data, but you can also fill in or type in a name of a manufacturer with, which is not in the EDP yet. But let me just um, uh, let me just, just use one. I will use the Allen Bradley. Um, then we um, type in the, the order number, let's imagine I just type in anything. Um, or product number now. And then you can yeah, select the representation style. So at the moment we have IEC and NFPA in inch. We offer to you, um, I select now the NFPA representation style. As I mentioned, the product group is a pre-filled with electrical engineering. And now um, you have to select to which uh, category the part you want to request belongs to. Let's imagine it's a drive and um, a mounted on a mounting panel and has um, 11 to 20 connection points. You can add additional information, um, which is yeah, optional. 
and very important, we definitely need a data sheet from the part so that it's really crystal clear which part you, you need and that there can, can't be any misunderstandings. So you can either upload a document like a PDF file or insert a link to uh, the manufacturer's website or to a distributor's website or wherever you can find um, yeah, the data sheet. And then you have to agree to submit the contact information to ePlan um, because yeah, it might be that um, we have to contact you in regards of this order. So this contact information will only be used in um, in connection with uh, yeah questions to this order. So now I um, yeah added all information. You saw that the button um, yeah activated here um, as I filled in uh, the link to the data sheet. Um, but first of all, I would like to mention on the right side here you will see what data you will get. So for this type of part, um, this uh, parts data function template, 3D graphic drilling and connection point pattern is mandatory due to the ePlan data standard for this type of, type of part. So you will get all of these data types. You see here the required ePlan credits, which is 12. So it's a really complex part. I um, would like to request here and you, you see here the available ePlan credits in this organization I'm in. And the expected delivered delivery time is um, here three to five working days, which is at the moment for all um, orders, uh, the expected delivery time. So, but that it will depend also on the number of orders that are coming in, maybe that changes, but um, that is really the aim to, to be able to deliver within five working days latest. And here you can get more information about the ePlan data standard. And then I will submit this order. I get an, another summary of everything um, I filled in and then I send it. And that takes a couple of seconds, but shouldn't take too long. Yep. Does, it, does the customer, does, um, do they get like an email confirmation that the request has been submitted? Yes, they get an email uh, a confirmation. Um, exactly when the when the order is submitted, and they also get emails when, for example, the data creator has a um, has a question. For example, here this one with the red dot is marked. I um, yeah I did it yesterday for for also for testing purposes. Um, but here here you will see that the data creator um, has a question. For example, it could be. Um, that the, or here I did it in German yesterday, but it's like uh, that the, the data, the link to the data sheet is not valid and um, the data creator cannot find the data sheet. And then you can answer here within the system and um, send, send another link or answer the question, whatever the data creator had. So, and if this happens, that um, you have to take action, that the data creators can go on uh, creating this data set, um, you will also get notified via email. And another, um, okay. yeah, and another point where you will get an email is when the data set is completed. So when it's ready for download, um, let's yeah take a look at this completed order here. This is how it will look like. You can download here the EDZ file, do it, um, you see the EDZ file is now downloaded and um, then you will also get um, yeah get an email when this is ready for downloading so then you can be sure that it's ready and then you can use it in your engineering. Right, so yeah. I, have, I, have, yeah. I, have, I have two questions here the uh, customer will or oh, is there is there a, is there a timeline how long the download will be valid or is it until until the customer is in, in his organization, so without the expiration date. The, the download. It's it's an it's without an expiration date, so it should be uh, it should be valid for download and should be ready for download for really a long time. Um, so at the moment, uh, yeah, it's the first time I have this question from you, um, but um, yeah, that should be really long valid. So it's uh, no no not, plan not. that um, that to to delete it at any time. I was going uh, forwarding the question from, from Matt before, right? Imagine you're you're getting a you're getting the component, you are forgetting to write a filter, you're overwriting information, right? And mm -hmm. say, hey, it will be nice if I 
can get to the quality which I which I get from from purchase from ePlan back then, right? So it looks like this seemed to be then the way to um, get the the initial data again. Uh, the other question which I had is maybe a little bit more tricky. What if a customer uh, in the submit form try to be sneaky and enter not one card but for instance a series a series of cards, right? Yeah. Um, or, or or a part number which is not identifiable uh, how is it called identifiable for one component but for multiple components right how will the uh, like a group transaction of, of this look like because when he's submitting it he he sees for instance the credits i don't know 12 or 5 or or two credits uh which should be um uh how is it called which we should, we should pay for it, right? But in, in theory, right, we should then say, hey, actually, this is not part, this is not one part, this is, I know, a, a group of, of parts. Uh, how, how will this feedback mechanism work then? Work? Yeah, th then if we, um, if we find out that this happened, um, so it has to be one part um, that we create the data. Um, so if if this happens, um, we will uh, yeah we will cancel this request and give you the feedback back like um, with a with a short message like you requested a, a series of part please please request every part um, yeah one by one and then of course the credits which will be the the organization will be reduced by the credits before when you send the request and those will of course be refunded to your organization. Um, okay. Then you and will get a message that it's cancelled and that you should um yeah that you should request one by one every part okay. and this information will be in this list which you just sh sh showed before right where you, where you yeah see the exactly list. exactly mm -hmm. so, here. so here for example i got an i i have a cancelled request um this was cancelled by by the data creator oh no this was cancelled by myself so i as a requester I can also cancel the order because, um, yeah, maybe I found that my colleague created the part or something else. And as long as um, it is not started by the data creation team to create this data, I can also cancel it. But um, yeah, the data creation team can also cancel it. And then you will see the message. Um, yeah, also in this history shown shown. Yeah, directly. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to the next question. How do I purchase the credits? Yeah, the credits you can purchase via the normal way. So um, I think as you, if, if you are already an um, ePlan customer and having an ePlan license and using the ePlan platform, you know your salesperson, your, your sales mm -hmm. salesman uh, <laughs> very well. And um, they will also yeah. be able to uh, give you an offer for, for these ePlan credits. So, fantastic. The so the nor yeah, so just work with their perfect. So, yeah, so this use their, as you said, their contact person, their account manager. Yeah. Excellent. So, if we have other questions, Josephine, as we wrap up today, who can they contact? And are they allowed to contact you directly? Or have they, they are, on they the data are, portal? yes. I will be Fantastic. happy to answer all of your questions regarding the data portal and the data portal request process. So if you need any more information or yeah, please feel free to write me a mail. Um, yeah, and then you can, yeah, I, I will be happy to answer all of your questions and have you getting started with uh, using the data portal and using yeah the, the new request process or so this new service. And if you have any doubts, Excellent. let me let me explain what whatever you want me to explain <laughs> regarding these two products. Oh, no, this is fantastic. Like you said, I know we also have our local team, right? Karuno, I know for the United States customers, we have, um, you know, local support, like you said, to help you purchase those credits or to help you with any technical questions you may have. Um, and Josephine was kind enough to share with us her contact information. Uh, so as we wrap up today, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate you being on um, late your time zone on a Friday. Thank you. And thank you to Kruno for really helping us, um, like you said, uh, with all the technical questions around this. Uh, and thank you for those that attended today. Uh, as Kruno mentioned earlier, this was recorded and will be available for on demand if you'd like to rewatch to uh, see if you had um, 
some questions that might have come up that you wanted to uh, rewatch to remember. Um, with that, I think we will sign off for today. I don't know, Kruno, do you have any, any fun facts to close with or Josephine, a fun fact about you to close with before we go? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Sarah, I was waiting. I was, I was waiting for that since. I know you were. <laughs> since uh, our open line, fr ingredient of our open line Friday is also uh, the personality of the people who we are, who we are talking with um, and we know now a lot about what Josephine is doing at, at ePlan, right? And about the great products which she which she is man didn't uh, learned a lot about Josephine. So Sarah, feel free to ask her one or two questions until we are clo closing out here. Well, I guess Josephine, what is your favorite season? Not to put you on the spot, do you have a favorite time of year? <laughs> it's definitely winter. So I'm a passionate skier and um yeah, it's not so far to the Alps and um yeah, I'm a passionate skier and I love skiing and I also love uh, watching World Cup, World Cup skiing in the in the TV. So I know US also has some famous skiers like Michaela Schifrin. I'm a big fan of yeah. her and um yeah, and actually, yeah. um, those of you who are also passionate in watching skiing, um, yeah, you might uh, remember Bodie Miller, who was also my favorite yeah. skier. Um, at, uh, yeah, fa fun fact, um, our cat is named Bodie, and uh, we named him after Bodie Miller. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Yes, I've just begun to learn how to downhill ski. So nowhere near being on an Alps <laughs> mountain. We're on very small mountains in the Minnesota area. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you uh, Sarah, you are from the Minnesota area, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, the winters in Minnesota are, 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 are super cold. I, I remember, what was it, 2018, 2019? When I was mm -hmm. traveling a lot for ePlan, I was one week here in Houston. It was, I think, the second week of February. It was, it was, I was, I was in Houston, and it was like uh, pretty high temperature, around 20, 20 degrees Celsius, right? Uh, for those people who are watching from Europe, maybe uh, I know. Is it 70, 80 degrees, 80 degrees or any, or any Fahrenheit? 80 degrees, yeah. The, the next week I had to travel to Minnesota and it was in Celsius minus 15. So I, I think it was around zero degrees, zero degrees Fahrenheit back, back to um, back to back week. It was a, a really interesting um, experience for my, for my body. Eh? From almost summer can temperatures, only imagine. To late spring temperatures to to the deepest winter okay. back to back. That was interesting. So, Josephine, if you want right, to feel right. really cold, uh, visit <laughs> Sarah in Minnesota. Do, do you right can here. come on, yeah, come <laughs> come visit. I, I, yeah, we won't have the same experience of skiing, maybe, but we definitely have have the cold for you. Fantastic. That's good. That's well, we fantastic. Of, that is good. But we are out of time for today. So thank everyone so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. And uh, it was great getting to know you, Josephine, today. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.